Hello everyone and welcome to a game called Apocalypse Encounter. Apocalypse Encounter is about the outbreak of zombies going on. It's a zombie game. So we're gonna get into it and play it. Let's start. It's a visual novel too, by the way. After such a long journey, I appear to have finally reached a dead end. Ha! <laughs> la! Is this really where my luck finally runs out? The world was doomed half a year ago, or had it been longer, with all of the electronics either out of battery or broken beyond repair. I wasn't quite sure. All I knew was that my city had fallen by the time I woke up to this living nightmare. I had managed to continue scavenging for food and supplies for a short time. How? Let's just say I was different from the other survivors. Still, there was something I really needed, but it eluded me everywhere I looked for it. Gasoline. Most of the gas stations nearby were either siphoned dry by those looking to escape the city. The others were packed full of monsters too difficult to fight off. My tank was empty, and I was a sitting duck on the road. And abandoned, the abandoned cars on the street were not the ideal place to look for fuel, either. When I was little, I always heard stories of people bragging that car locks were easy to pick. Unfortunately for me, those were just straight-up lies. When I was younger, I heard stories saying that- What? A straight-up lies, yes. Did they- did they say that twice? I- I'm not sure. Did I say that twice? What's going on? You may be wondering why I couldn't just hack open the fuel tank by force. One, you risk blowing yourself up. Two, you might not have... Uh, you might not have not have... Wait, you might not have not have the proper tools to force it open and risk injury. And three, you might release whatever monster was hiding inside the car. Grrr. And luckily enough of to barely scrape a but I was lucky enough to barely scrape by in my earlier forages. However, this situation harboring evolved monster was was something that caught me off guard completely. It possessed the ability to control other monsters. My ability is just useless against that power. The canister of gas felt heavy in my hand. Thinking quickly, I swung the container and sprayed the monsters with the gasoline. After the canister was empty, I sprinted forward as fast as I can. I flicked open and ignited the lighter I had put old for my pocket. I threw the tool at the back puddle and hoped for the best. <laughs> the gasoline caught fire, searing the monster or that had stepped on it. I sprinted away with all of my remaining strength. And my last source of fuel gone, I decided to abandon my car. I could only attempt to escape the mutant's rage by influence of food. Alas, the fire could not stop the mutant at the center of this chaos. So... Screak! With a loud hiss, the mutant summed the more monsters my way. I love the design of these monsters. They're so cool. Ha! <laughs> Looking back, I could see the monsters hot on my tail. I was starting to get tired. It was only a matter of time before the monsters catched up to me. Is this really the way my life ends? A bright flash of light near nearly blinded my vision. Boom! Creak! The deaf and noise of a car engine and a frantic breaking afterwards surprised me. The hell are you doing? I stare at the driver, still shaken by his sudden entrance. If you want to die, don't jump in front of my vehicle. Plenty of zombies out there to finish that job for you. Hey, watch out behind you! Sensing the immediate... The immediately danger. Sensing the immediate danger, I quickly hop to the side. The monster er, jumping at me, crashing in into the front of the driver's vehicle. Bzzz. As soon as her, her bodies collided with the front plate of the car, they were electrocuted by it. 
A foul smell of burning flesh filled the air. Before I could react, a strong hand grabbed my arm and dragged me towards the inside of the vehicle. Stop spacing out! Hurry up and get in! Let's scram before they recover. Ah? Uh? As the mysterious rescuer pulled me roughly inside the cabin, my body was thrown on top of him due to the momentum. Looking up, I froze when I examined his face closely. I like you. That day many years ago, when the earth had not descended into yell yet. When my only worry is would be my exam grades and naive love, I confessed to him. Kane. It's you. Eh? Wait. I was surprised you'd recognize me. It had been a lengthy time since we last spoke. And it would be awkward if the only thing he remembered was my confession. Great. I'll explain everything later. Trust me and hold on tight. We need to get out of here first. Kane got on the driver's seat and hit the pedal. The car sped up towards the highway, pulling past several monsters along the way. Holding on, on tight to my own seat, I was perplexed. Kane's earlier actions made it seem as if he recognized me, but he did not expect that I would know him. About half an hour later, we stopped in a quiet rural area. Now that I could actually take a look around, I noticed that this car was actually a very small RV. The inside looked much larger than the exterior suggested. We should be safe here. There are no commercial buildings around this area, so we are much less likely to bump into many monsters. My name's Kane. How about yours? Damien. Hey Damien, let me ask. Are you that pianist from Romney's, Romney's Gay Bar? Romney's Gay Bar? That felt like a lifetime ago. Wait. If he is trying to recognize people from the gay bar, doesn't that mean he's not as but was not as straight as I first thought? Eh, sorry. It sound if that sounded creepy. You just look very similar to him, that's all. No no. That was me. I need to pull myself together. We are still oh like strangers at this point. We need to focus on our survival first. Well, I used to frequently, frequently visit that place just to see you perform. Really? Well, thanks. It's too bad that Romney's isn't around anymore. Right. I might have accidentally killed the conversation. Anyways, your RV looks comfortable. I couldn't imagine finding myself in such a place ace during these times. It's cool, isn't it? This is actually my home. More than half of it, it isn't paid off, though. Not that I'll probably ever need to. Still, I would gladly pay the rest off if it meant this apocalypse thing would end sooner rather than later. Yeah, well, the whole situation is unfortunate. So were you trying to grab some fuel at the station? I assume you didn't travel there by foot. That was the plan, but I had, burned, I had to burn it all. Was he also trying to get fuel from there? Ah, uh, no worries. I was just trying my luck on the way there, but it's not something I desperately need or anything. This RV has a hybrid gas and electric system. There's solar panels on the roof that can power this vehicle for a short period of time if needed. Some fuel reserves are nice if I want the engine power to be less exhausting. Exhausting? Oh, I meant the battery exhaustion. I need to power up the front electric plate in case in case run into more zombies. In case I run into any more zombies, you know? Right. That saved me. Thank you. No need to express gratitude. Honestly, that's just part of my part-time job. What? <laughs> Damien, have you ever heard of the Agathon base? You mean the Agathon Corporation? Agathon Corporation is a world-famous company that specializes in multiple areas of technology. It is so large that most families have at least one home appliance under their label. So, you haven't heard of it, huh? I guess it's not as widely known here 
so close to ground zero of the incident. Well, after the great disaster, Agafon Corporation was the first group to react. They swiftly developed shielding from the contamination. They used the shielding to construct the base for survivors to stay at. They are also trying to build a new forward basis to prevent the contamination from spreading. The faster Agathon puts up new bases, the more ground humans can reclaim from contamination. Because of these efforts, they need as much manpower as possible. So you're here to recruit me? I prefer the freedom of having my own mobile home, so I took up their missions to collect survivors and bring them to our base. In exchange for each person I find, I get some supplies like food or gasoline. So if I were to work for them, how would they treat me? I'm not too sure, frankly. I doubt you would get a full salary and benefits like a full-time job. Not that money is worth anything now. However, they do guarantee some minimal living necessities. Uncontaminated land where can still grow normal crops and livestock like cattle. The more our land we recover, the easier all our lives will be. It's currently the safest place a survivor can go. Is it protected from those monsters? The zombies, of course. They are protected by the regional military. Also, the base is sh building can detect any contaminated life forms trying to enter the base. This sounds too good to be true. I need some time to think about this. Yeah, take your time. I need to return to the base to stock up soon. You can take a look outside before deciding if you want to stay or not. Wouldn't that be too much trouble? Also, if I decide not to stay, how are you going to exchange your supplies with a gaffon? Let's just say you're special. Normally, anyone I save has... Is two choices. Get out of my vehicle or promise to stay at Gaffon base. I'm not very reassured. Thanks. Well, if I'm too much of a hassle, I can just get off along the way. I'm still very uncertain about joining the base, and I can always protect myself. Hey, no need to become defensive. I won't force you to come along if you don't want to. There's some other things that you can do in exchange for supplies at the base. You can even become a free explorer like me. That sounds better. Just get some rest for now and we can talk more later. Kane opened up a, a one of the upper drawers, pulling out a towel and a large t-shirt. Go to the bathroom and clean yourself up. The water in the tank is limited, so please don't indulge yourself too much. Thank you. I was truly grateful for this generosity. I haven't had the luxury of a shower in almost half a month. The bathroom was tiny, but it held a small sink in the mirror. Carefully locking the door behind me, I slowly took off my clothes. Since the mirror was oh close, I caught sight of something I was trying hard to ignore. A blue crystal in the middle of my chest looked as if it were engraved into my flesh. I turned away and turned on the shower. My reflection became blurry as the thick condensation covered the mirror. I'm not a monster. I'm not a monster. Uh-oh. Oh no. I'm back. Kane was digging up something from the back of the carton box, sitting on the table. Hungry? Here's something on me. He handed up a small packet. The package was simple and... No unique markings? That's a gaff on special ration. One packet should keep you full for half a day. It doesn't seem like they put taste into consideration, though. Thank you. I'll make sure to pay you back later. All the food that I scavenged was in my abandoned car, and they're all outdated. Canned food that tasted well past before their best, best before date. I opened the packet and took a bite of what was inside. It wasn't as bad as I expected. It felt like biting into bland, dry bread. It was a lot more condensed than bread, but I couldn't really complain. I closed my eyes, enjoying the first taste of fresh food since forever. Whoa, you look like you really enjoy it. 
Still doesn't... Still, much better than in the things I had to put into my mouth for survival. Fair enough. I'll definitely bring you better food someday. You don't need to. This is plenty good already. I was serious when I said you were special to me, you know? The way you play the piano was very soothing. It brought me a peace and alleviated all my stresses whenever I hear you perform. I always wanted to know you better, but... You were were a hired performer, and I wasn't sure if you swung that way. I blinked silently at him. Don't worry. I know it's not at the time to say something like that. I'm just glad the monsters haven't gotten to you first. I'm very thankful. I just don't know what to say since it was so unexpected. By the way, I'm not trying to take advantage of your situation or anything. But this RV only has one loft bed on top of the driver's seat. You'll need to join me tonight. So, yeah! Bruh, there's also a floor. There's a floor I can sleep on? The bed's really big, so don't worry about me doing anything that will invade your personal space. Right. I guess I don't have any complaints. Um... He really doesn't remember me after all. Should I feel lucky? It would be pretty awkward if he remembered midway through. It was already over the confession, but why is my heart beating so fast? Staring at the star, the skylight on the roof of the RV, I had difficulty falling asleep. Hey, you awake, Damien? Yeah. Just relax and close your eyes, okay? This RV has reinforcements on the outside. It's safe to sleep here. I can always wake you up if I see anything strange. That's right. The only one here is Kane. He wouldn't hurt me. I already knew that. Despite my... The bad boy appearance. What? <laughs> he always had a kind heart. You never know, is all I'm gonna say. Thinking about the past and trying to push it behind me, I drifted off to sleep. I woke up with a chill underneath my spine. Something dangerous was watching me. I could feel it. I struggled to open my eyes. Uh, Kane, wake up! The blood-red eyes were so close behind the skylight that I could feel them drilling into me as if I was the creature's greatest meal. Stop staring at that thing. Get down! Kane pulled me down from the bed and, and onto the floor. As if sensing me move, the creatures start clawing at the skylight glass. Don't panic. The RV's equipped with thick bulletproof glass. That thing won't make its way in, even if it wanted it to. I recognize that thing. That body form looks a, a lot like the mutant back at the gas station. It's going to be a lot of trouble to put it down. The mutant I encountered at the station was small and short. The one on the roof earlier looked close in form. Damien, can you lend a hand in driving? We need to space up pretty fast and get to the best off the roof. I nodded and jumped into the driver's seat. I then quickly turned on the engine. Vroom vroom! Is that enough? Mutants are pretty strong, even by themselves. I'll activate the electric trap on the roof to blast it. I... My feet hit the pedal, and the vehicle's speed picked up. Okay, here I go. Kane placed his hand on the square-shaped metal plate on the wall, hidden in the dresser. His palm glowed with sparks resembling lightning. Bzzzg! After a cackling sound, I heard the terrible screeching of the monster that was getting further and further. The demo ends here. Please check back later for updates. Oh, so that was just a demo. Nice. So we encountered a situation where two people who are kind of strangers to each other, but knew each other in the past in their own ways, met in the middle of an apocalypse, and it might turn into a gay fest. And I'm okay with that. I like love and apocalypses. Uh, my favorite movie is that one movie about... Um, 
this girl falling in love with a zombie and then finding out that all the zombies just need their heart to be full and they they band together and fight these the real zombies which are these these abomination things I don't really know that was my favorite movie though so I'm down for love in the zombie apocalypse setting anyway that was Apocalypse Encounter. There were a few grammatical errors, and but a lot less than like the other games that we played by this guy. This is the same creator who made the four other games I played before this, which uh, is the Crimson Flower one, the Haunted House one, and all of that. For now, this is the last game I'm gonna play by this guy. But I really hope to see more games by him in the future, and maybe the full game of this game soon as well. Anyway, feel free to go check him out. Links are in the description below all the videos for all the games that I played. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye!